Blog Talk Radio. and I'm bringing you live Live Without Limits, and today's show is titled Why You Should Increase Your Freelancing Rate, and one of the things to consider is this, that freelancing has become the job of the future, and how you decide to do it depends on you. Now, let me back up and let me say this. This weekend is the 50th reunion from graduation from high school. And men and women in those days had well-defined roles. Many women, if they went to college and went into the workplace, they were usually secretaries or teachers. They did not have uh, the opportunities that many women had today. And that really did not come about till the late 80s and 90s, that women were able to break the glass ceiling and get into the workforce. But it also was a time when you saw the workforce changing simply because there were other opportunities for women and the education afforded them the opportunity to do the things that they themselves truly wanted to do and not be pigeonholed back into the workforce. Hands down, the most useful class I took in college was persuasive communication. The class was taught by Barbara Tanaham and formidable communications consultant to top business executives and government officials. Her lessons on public speaking were great. She taught us how to carry a room, how to listen, how to project. But what made the class so valuable was the entrepreneurial wisdom that she peppered into the lessons gleaned from her years of freelancing. The advice that changed my life. Now, I have been freelancing basically ever since I entered the workforce, simply because growing up with a disability, I did not have the same opportunities as everyone else when it came to employment. And that's because when I was educated, you did not have the Individual Disability Education Act, which guaranteed people with disabilities the right to an education. Therefore, teachers didn't understand that I learned differently or that because cerebral palsy affects how the brain processes information, that it just processed what I was taking in differently. Therefore, my grades never truly showed what I was truly capable of, and therefore I was always looked at as that person who would never amount to much. Then in 1990, the Americans with Disabilities Act was passed, and I was already in the workforce for 12 years before that law became effective or took, uh, what is the word I'm trying to think of? But it took effect because it was passed in 1990, but it wasn't until 1992 that those laws became effective. So if 10% of your customers aren't saying no to you because of your rate, then you are not charging enough. Simple as it sounds, this advice alone is responsible for earning me hundreds of thousands of dollars in additional freelance income. 
but it majorly misses the mark, which I will get into in a bit. And any freelancers out there setting their own rates, especially women who are socializing to ask for less and ruffle any feathers. Here is my pricing advance. Embrace the nose. Most people are terrified to talk about money. They charge too little for their time simply to avoid an awkward two-minute encounter. This used to be true to me. At 21, I was running my first company, a babysitting network that I had started once from a few Craigslist ads, for which had grown into one of New York's top child care agencies. I was regularly negotiating over the phone with some of the wealthiest families in New York, often while huddled under the stairwell in my college's cafeteria. These conversations sent my anxiety through the roof and kept me up at night. I didn't want to make people mad, and because of my age, I always was terrified that I didn't deserve any money at all for any time. I couldn't have felt more like an impostor. Imposter. Barbara's words helped me to reframe the nose, and I sometimes received rather than making me feel like I was doing something wrong. She also helped me to realize that these nos were the market's way of reinforcing that my rate was not too low. Eight years and thousands of nos later, I have come to accept that no as a natural part of freelance life. Now, remember this. We always undercut what we think we're worth. And generally, think of it this way. The base pay for anything should be at least $100 an hour when you're a freelancer. But here's how to figure out what it is that you should be making. Look at what you want to earn a year. Then you got to break it down to, to make that what would you need to make in a month, in a week, per hour. That's how you figure out what it is that you want to charge. Realize that your hour is not just an hour. It can be easy to doubt that you're worth a thousand, two hundred dollars, or even fifty dollars an hour. One thing to keep in mind <coughs> when determining your rate is that the client is paying for so much more than that one hour. Is there additional travel time, prep time, follow-up time? What about the overhead of your business, the opportunity cost it takes to leap from a cozy full-time job with health care and benefits to risky and seasonal freelancing? And don't forget to set aside 30% plus for federal, state, city, and self-employment taxes. As most freelancers know, you are never going to look back-to-back -back billable hours from 9 to 5 p.m., even if your phone is ringing off the hook with new clients. You still need to build a buffer time in between clients, unpaid lunches, unpaid sick days, unpaid vacation days, and so on. And not every client is created equal. Some may require a lot more upfront work or customer service, and they only work with you once. That being said, while they 
or any reasons to justify rate increases. There are other equally important reasons to justify lower rates. When you are first starting out, you should often offer a discounted rate as you build up testimonials and experience. You can view the rate discount as an investment toward building your freelance business. Other reasons you may offer discounts include an easygoing client who will be a pleasure to work with, a client who brings lots of return business, a client who will refer others, a client who is flexible about time frames and can always be scheduled around other clients, a client in an area you are looking to gain more experience in. The main point is that you are never billing for one hour at a time in a vacuum. Each hour of time comes with addition, additional expenses and is also part of the investment you're making to your personal business and reputation. This is often one thing that people don't think about and they don't realize what it takes to build a business. And remember, when you're working with a client, that unless you have worked with someone else on similar types of issues, then you are actually preparing for each session prior to. So if you want to break that down, figure out if you're paying and or you're working an extra five to ten or even fifteen hours prior to doing and spending that hour time with you, then you need to break it down and figure out what you are making for each hour based on what you are charging. Because if you only charge $100 an hour and you put in another 15 hours of time, then you got to figure 15 into 100 will tell you exactly how many hours that you are working. So let's look at it this way. If you're putting in 15 hours of time and you're getting $100 an hour for that time, then let's look at it this way. If you, so you're putting in, you can say 16 hours into 100 means that you're actually only making $6.25 an hour for your time. So if you're putting in 15 hours prior to and you want to make at least $10 an hour, then you need to figure this out. That if you're putting, you then the base that you can charge them is a minimum of $160 per, for that hour session because what does that do? That's actually giving you more per hour and make sure that you're making at least $10 for every hour that you put into making and preparing for the session you have with your client. Understand the math. Since many freelancers only work with a handful of clients at a time, there is no need to price yourself so that you can work for everyone. And, of course, you can always offer discounts to great clients with smaller budgets. You only need a price that works for the small group of people who truly understand and value your services 
and the math often works out in your favor if you charge more. Let's work through an example. I, I'm a math tutor. This is what I do. Let's say your surface or personal training, like my friend Elise, and let's pretend that there are three potential clients. Person one, I should work out more. I pay $25 per session. Person two, Elise seems great. I'll pay $50 per session. Person three, Elise is the best trainer I've ever worked with. I want to hire her to train me in the gym of my $40 or $40 million home. I pay $250 per session. If Elise was to price her training to appease everyone, she should charge $25 per session, have three clients, and make $75 per week. Assuming that she spends one hour per week with each client, she would be valuing herself at $25 per, per hour, ignoring marketing costs, business overhead, and so on. If she priced her sessions at $50, meanwhile, she would have two clients and earn $100 for two hours of work or $50 per hour. And if she priced her sessions at $250, you've got the math down by now. She would have one client earn $250 per session and make $250 per hour. Of course, these numbers are made up and it is impossible to know in advance exactly what your market looks like. But notice how at the highest price point is this in this example, Elise makes over three times what she makes at the lowest price point and works only one third of the time. So her time ends up being valued 10 times higher while I was initially scared to test a theory time and time again, it's proven true as I have gained more experience and expertise as a test prep tutor, I have increased my rate accordingly. My income has continued to increase even as my working hours have continued to decrease. So, can you see here just how important it is for you to understand what you are valued? It all depends on what your customer will pay. I once attended a presentation by Anthony Morrison. What he was doing and the is that he ran at the time info commercials to get people interested in attending his presentations. Then he would go into a city, he would do it each day in a different hotel for two hours, and he hired someone to be the presenter for those two hours and hype up how much money he made. Now, what he was doing was he had taken a system that works on the internet and built a business in it, it within his niche. Then what he had done is he worked out and built a list of all the search engine optimization words and phrases for that industry. Then he had gone out and marketed his product and service when it was relatively new on the Internet so that he built it up to a million-dollar business. And then what he was doing was selling that program for $5,000 at a time when corporations were cutting back and 
downsizing because what had happened is they had merged with other companies and in their mergers they had two to three people on their payrolls doing the same thing so that what they were doing was looking for a way to downsize and cut out having multiple people performing the same jobs so that what was happening was that you had a lot of upper management and middle management positions, people who had lost their jobs, and they were trying to go out and shortcut how to earn that income that they lost instead of looking for a system that they could use to build a business within their industry, growing their income exponentially, doing something that they truly enjoy doing, test out different price points. So what kind of crazy math do you have to do to figure out the magical price point for your services? Good news, you don't have to do any. You can simply do an A-B test on prices or in layman's terms, change them from time to time to see what happens. I used to feel terrified anytime I would raise my prices or the prices of the services that my business were offering. I will never forget the first time we raised the prices at my child care agency by very, very small amount. We debated it endlessly, which I'm sure was my fault because I was 21 and thought every single business decision should be debated for hours. I tossed and turned all night the day before the change went live. I honestly thought that letting our customers know about the price change that we would get dozens of furious emails from people who had trusted us and now felt betrayed and who would never be using our services again. Of course, we didn't get a single email like that. The biggest reason was that they understood what we were doing grandfather in current clients. Now, I'm going to go back and talk about a company that I'm currently involved with that's doing digital marketing. And the company's been around since 2011, but really has only been promoting and using an affiliate marketing system for the first, the last two years. And what they did was when you looked at when they first started marketing and the website, it was clunky, it was hard to use, you had to have a technical background to really be able to use it. Then they came out with version 2.0 and in version 2.0, it became a drag and drop web, web builder site, it became a responsive site, and then they started including different apps, different ways to generate scripts, and they increased the price. But the people who actually came in the beginning are still paying that same price. Now, they're about to come out with version 3.0 and they've upgraded the software and made it far easier to use, plus they have included much more software into the system to make it a truly digital product that you can almost take and go on Fiverr and become an agency where you can sell your services on digital marketing and offer 
client a way to market their business online. And what they, the original people who came in that did not become ambassadors or did not become certified partners where they can go out and work independently and charge a much higher fee, then what they're doing is if you come in today, you are paying $49.90. You come in after July 1st when they implement all the upgrades, you're going to be paying $69.90. So they're going up $20 from version 2 to version 3, but they also perfected it. But if you come in under the 49.90 and you have the business package, then when it increases two months later, you're going to be grandfathered in, continuing to pay what you're paying today. And that's why you should always, when you run a business, Think about grandfathering in people who are already your customers and helping you market your products and services. Because we offered a grandfather period, meaning our current customers would be charged our older, lower agency fee for the six months after the rate change was announced. Because of this, when we sent the newsletter about the price change, no one cared because it didn't affect them at the moment. No one was dis dissecting every word of our emails. They were living their own lives. Do a damn good job. Before raising rates, make sure you're going above and beyond for your clients and have a group of satisfied customers. Here are my top three recommendations. Set clear and reasonable expectations. If it's a rookie mistake to promise the moon and beyond to a client, then undercover. And here's another thing to think about. When you are setting your prices, and you are looking to increase them down the road, then the best thing you can do is to set a price and over-deliver on what you are offering them for that price. That way, when you go up in price, they will accept it better because they understand that the business that you have offered them is far more valuable than what you have currently given them. That's why Builderall, in the way they have run their business, have been able to go up in price because when you look at what they offer you for $49.90, you're getting a script generator, you're getting a video Rapper, you can create your own videos. You have access to apps where you can do social proof. You can do auto post to your fan pages on Facebook. You can have where you can do search engine optimization, where you can check your website to see how it's ranked for certain keywords, all of that is what's giving you value. And remember, you can go to my website, and that website is the number one, personalcareercoach.com, and you can sign up for both individual or group coaching, and we can work with you and help you to build your business from where you are now to where you want to be in the future.